Try to bring your head towards your knees. Locking the thumbs together when you're ready to breathe in. Pull in and up and out. We come and back. And hands come down in front when you're ready to breathe out. Deep breath, now standing straight. Looking straight ahead. Arms out, shoulders up, back and down. Feet placed apart so you can balance comfortably. Deep breathing, close your eyes and take three deep breaths. Stabilizing the heart, centering your body in such a fashion that you can stand comfortably. And last breath will stabilize your nervous system so that you're ready to continue. So how did everybody do with the sun salutation? Good. Nobody got stuck down there. My daughter was bringing up a good point. I'll just demonstrate here where sometimes it's a bit of a challenge. If you find it hard when you're in this position here, to bring that foot all the way up there. The technique would be to bring your leg down on the opposite side and help this leg go into position. So no excuse, in other words, to not be able to do it. It's a great leg, okay? And that's often the case with most people when you're just starting. So don't worry about that. You'll get it together. So I think what we can do is sit down comfortably on your mask up and get you water bottles. If you've got some, I'm gonna show you a few interesting things here before we go on to the music segment. Some handy dandy tips. Um, this is something my daughter got for me. A yoga bag. A matching yoga mat. You've got yoga belts, which are really handy. If you need to, you know, sit at night for your meditation, you could cross your legs and tighten your belt. <laughs> my daughter's belt, so she knows how to tug it. I made my own little belt because I was really ge ingenious at one point. Like I couldn't get to the yoga store when I needed my yoga belt. It's just a sheet. And I made a fancy little knot that somebody could label as a sailor's knot. Watch this when you're sitting in meditation at night. You can easily just transcend that. So these are little tips and techniques. So far, meditation together. We're also going to be showing the use of mala. And soon we're going to be doing the music as well. So we have a few minutes left for that. So I'm going to show you various malas. You're going to ask me, what is a mala? You might be knowing already. There's different kinds. You see, I'm wearing a very blessed uh, Rudraksha mala, which is given to me by my music guru. It's kind of charged, I would say. Here's a larger size for some your hands. Tara, would you like to hand these out? And those of you who want to try to meditate with a mama, you're welcome to. There's different ones, smaller ones for a tiny, tiny hands and child's hands, fancy ones with sandalwood powder, sandalwood, sandalwood smelling like a lovely powder. And these are rosewoods. So you can take a look at them when she brings them around and you can try. I'd like to show you how to use those. Maybe much like a I think somebody wants one back there too. Yeah. Okay, I can't do that. So let's get uh, started with the concept of. Rachel, could you come up here and join for the meditation? Yeah, here. Here, you demonstrate how. I'll show one way, then you show the other. So, where there's two ways I'm going to give you, for those of you that uh, find that the basic way is easier than the more advanced way, you're going to start with, but perhaps we'll start talking first about the guru beat. The first beat, beside your mala, beside that little mala tassel. So the first beat, we would generally say a prayer. Uh, the best prayer I can think of in this circumstance would be, God help us. That covers it all. <laughs> help us to meditate, help us to be regular, help us to you know, work through all the difficulties that might get in the way. Because I do believe in positive thinking, and I believe in prayer as positive thinking, because I have experimented and I find it, it really works. So I would say, you know, at the beginning, oh God help us. So the next bead we're going to hold is going to be held in such a fashion that you're going to be able to pull it. So we're going to show you some techniques. The first one is going to be simply taking your mom 
ball, putting it over your hand like this. So if you're left-handed, you would take the right hand and place it onto your left hand. If you're right-handed, you would take it and place it like so. So next, we're going to be able to move this easily by securing the oh, easy way first or the hard way first? Easy way first. Easy way is simply putting your thumb on the first bead, pulling it towards you. That's pretty easy. It's easy for her. I find it harder than the hard way, but... They usually do it the opposite way. So oh, you, you pull it. There's various ways to do it, so you find that which suits you. I'm going to show you the way I do it, and I was taught this way. So this is the more advanced way. The thumb goes into the mouth, like so. Just give it a try, you can experiment. Close the ring finger and thumb together. You turn it like so, so it's going to hang, and you place your hand on your knee comfortably. Then you're going to pull with the middle finger the first bead towards you. And the mala serves as a tool. It's simply a tool. Like for example, Aryan, if you take a hammer and you put a nail in the wall, is it going to work? For sure, if you know how to have it. If you try to take the mind and control it, sometimes it goes here, there, here, there. But the hammer is the tool in that case. The mala is a tool. It just helps you concentrate and get the job done. And once you feel like you're in a deep meditation, you can just drop your mala. It's a tool. It's done its job. So let's take a try together. We're going to be pulling with the ring finger, the, I mean, pulling with the middle finger. The bead before the bead towards you, so one after another, and we're going to take a mantra. I'd just like you to work with the concept of holding it first. Rachna's going to demonstrate her way. I'd like you to try to see if you can just get them moving. At first it seems a little distracting, but it's very helpful once you uh, grasp what's happening. And if you're doing this way, with the, the more advanced way, apparently energy is pumped up the left arm and it helps energy rise up your spine. So that's the added advantage. Okay, so let's take the mantra now. And the mantra we're going to use today, we'll check out our time. Okay, we're going to have a fast mantra today. This is one that's very powerful. We have other Sanskrit mantras that are a little bit more longer and effective, but we're going to just take the mantra, Sham. I'm going to spell it for you. So you can visualize S H Y A A M. It's S H Y, so Sha. S H Y, Sha, and long A. Sha is with the M resonating in the third eye. Sha, and it means that blue, black, beautiful space, pure, free, and fervor. And so that's within each one of us, and it's behind every background thought permeating all of existence. So I'd say it's a pretty good mantra to start. So let's take our mamas, and we're going to hold the bead. First bead, whichever way you're holding it, and we're going to say the mantra. So you can say it out loud. We're going to demonstrate out loud. You can say it with us if you'd like out loud. Then we're going to whisper it. Then we're going to take it mentally inside where it's even more powerful. So let's do, um, we're going to get our handy dandy timer, dollar shop timer. And there we go. So, how long do you think you can handle this? One minute, two minutes for meditation. If you've sat for a while, I would suggest you work towards 11 minutes every day. Morning, 11 at night. Uh, we're going to start with, I'm going to say three minutes. I think we can manage that. Safely. And then we're going to go to the next segment. So I'm going to start our heavy dandy timer. We're going to have our malas ready. And one other thing I have to show you quickly before we start. This is our shawl throwing technique. I just want you to see this, this is really fun. If it's cold, which it isn't now, you would take your shawl, wrap it around you, over your shoulder. That's your shawl throwing technique. So we don't need it now. I don't think so. <laughs> it's warm enough. But that's you know the extra thing that you can have beside you because if you keep all these things beside you, like your shawl, your timer, your mala, your yoga belt, your yoga mat, space where nobody interrupts you, very important, then you've got, what have you got? A lifestyle that'll serve you. 
So let's try with our meditation now. The total of three minutes. When the timer goes off, we're done. So we're going to start together with you. Maybe a few rounds out loud. Saying Shaw. A few, a few times whispering Shaw. And then we're going to say it all together mentally inside. Okay? Let's start. Next beat. Next one. Whispering. You coordinate it with your breath if you'd like. You can breathe in, say the mantra. Or take a deep breath. You see what works for you. Focus your energy on the third eye center, which is behind your eyes, just gently up in between your eyebrows. If you want to improve your concentration, I would say coordinate your breath with your mantra. If you don't have a ball, you can join the index finger and thumb on each hand together to make a circle. This will help your concentration. And keep repeating the mantra inside gently with love and feel the wonderful vibration. So preparing to come out slowly and just watch. You may not want to open your eyes right away. So just take a deep breath. And if you find that you need to sit more, which is generally the case when you realize how blissful it is within your being, then you would increase the time for sitting and work towards you know a schedule that suits you. And then observe after your meditation to come out. It might be a little difficult, but I would say, you know, let your mind know we're coming out now, mind, and you have to get working on your other things. So you rub your palms together to create friction and warmth, like so, as quick as you can. Place them over the bone structure of your eyes, opening your eyes with the warmth of your palms. And then just gently, if you like, massaging with your fingertips, the eyebrows, the cheek, cheeks are the bridge of the nose. If you have a long white beard, you could put it back in place. And maybe the back of the neck, you know, just gently with your fingertips, massaging if need be. Take a deep breath, opening up, and try to keep your attention on that background space behind every being, that pure space. Behind every thought, behind every action. And that way we don't lose our cool so much. I mean, if there's a fire, we have to get out, right? But <laughs> we'd still try to do it with, you know, awareness. But right now we have a beautiful, blissful place, safe from everything. So now let's come up and we're going to welcome the group uh, that's working together with Aryan and we're going to do some music for you. So just bear with us, we're just going to set up the stage a little bit further. 